move on from the uniform flow to look at two more fundamental flows. That's your point source and your point sink. And we'll look at these in two dimensions just to start with. So the basic idea, we'll start by looking at the the source and then move on to the sink. So for a source, a way you can visualize it is an extremely short and thin pipe that sprays water radially outwards on a plane. So imagine taking this pipe and making it extraordinarily short and extremely thin so it's right down to a point and then spraying water out across a plane. So you get something looking very much like that. And to make a mathematical model of this we have to come up with some geometry and this is the, the geometry that we adopt. You've got an angle theta from the horizontal, you've got your radial velocity and you've got your tangential velocity u theta which is at right angles to the radial velocity. So if we move this across here you can see how this works in our model. You've got your uh, radial velocity going out along the streamline and then at right angles to the, to the streamline you've got your tangential velocity. So let's get the potential function and the stream function for this flow. So the first step is to get the velocities. So here's my crude diagram and if we consider this very thin area here, this uh, radial cross segment, and let's tend this separation here right down, tend it all the way down to zero. So this gets infinitely thin. So the area of this bit when its separation is tiny is just going to be 2 pi r which is the circumference of a circle. When the separation is absolutely tiny the area will just be the circumference of a circle with that radius. So this is how we get our ur tangential um, our radial velocity so that's your 2 pi over r going here and then m is your flow rate and you'll probably know from basic fluids that m is 2 pi r ur and you'll notice if you substitute m in here the 2 pi r and the 2 pi r will cancel getting ur equals ur exactly as you would expect now if we think about u theta, it should be quite obvious because all of the flow is flowing radially outwards and if all of it's going radio out radially outward, you're going to have no tangential velocity. So u theta is just going to be zero. So now that we've got expressions for the velocities, we can equate these with the Cauchy-Riemann equations. We'll work in polar coordinates because we've adopted that geometry and by equating these we can get the potential and stream functions. So let's now equate it with the Cauchy-Riemann equation. These are the Cauchy-Riemann equations in polar coordinates or rather cylindrical um, polar. So we're going to take this bit here and equating that gives us this expression and we can use just a little bit of rearranging and simple integration will give us the value of the potential function as follows. So you've taken the dr across and you've integrating both sides so um, d phi becomes phi. Uh, you can take the m over 2 pi out, that's simply a constant. Some textbooks will just call m over 2 pi some letter and then obviously the integral of 1 over r dr is just ln r. So you've got the potential function is a constant times LNR. Now let's do exactly the same thing and we'll get the stream function. So you've got UR equating with the Cauchy-Riemann equations and we'll be interested in this part because this is in terms of our stream function. So we'll equate these two equations like this and then just do a very similar process. Take the R d theta to the other side integrate both sides, cancel the r's, take out m over 2 pi as a constant and then when you integrate d theta you end up with theta from basic integration. So you're getting the stream function 
is m over 2 pi theta. And these make a lot of sense if you think about what's going on here. So if we look at a diagram, it will become immediately clear why these equations are true. So this is our source. And we've got the angle theta through here. And it's the equations that we've developed. So when you think about it, these lines are going to be your streamlines. So they're going to have a constant stream function. So this line here is going to have stream function, it's called psi1, psi2, psi3 for each of these. And if you draw a line that is at right angles to each of these streamlines, you're going to get um, an equipotential surface. And this is going to be a circle. And on that circle, um, it's not a very good drawing, but around some circle you'll have equal potential function. That's why we call it an equipotential surface. So let's look at these equations. So for the stream function you've got the theta is specifying which streamline. For example when theta is say this is 45 degrees you'll be on psi 1 or maybe 60 degrees there's psi 2 and at 90 degrees you're on psi 3. So this theta is specifying the streamline and this is just a constant. Now looking at the potential function the R is going to tell you which circle you're on. So that's going to pick out the circle with equal stream function uh, not stream function, potential function circles of equal potential, equipotential surfaces. And the reason that you've got the ln is because you're going to have a singularity at R equals 0 and the ln takes care of that singularity because ln of 0 will just give you an error on your calculator. So if you take a minute to look at this um, diagram and s hopefully you should see why these equations make sense with the basic idea of streamlines and equipotential surfaces. And I tend not to memorize these equations, I just remember this diagram because the diagram makes more sense and then these equations fall out and you don't get them the wrong way around. And a sink is just the opposite of a source. Instead of having a point with flow going out of that point, you've got a point with all the flow going into that point radially inward, so it's just a backwards source. And to get that you just add a negative sign in those equations, which gives you these equations. And that's all I've got for you today. That's point sources and point sinks. And by using those along with uniform flows, you can build up some reasonably complex flows like Rankine axisymmetric fairings and doublets and the flow around a cylinder. It can all flow from this, these three basic flows that we've looked at. Thank you for